I'm hoping today's video turns out okay because I'm a little under the weather. So I got some hot tea and some fisherman's friends just to try and keep me from coughing in your ear. What I'm doing is taking a look at this, um, the Dynex uh, KVM, uh, keyboard video mouse switch. Basically, it's got two outputs uh, to the computer, uh, to two different computers, two monitor inputs from two different computers, and then one monitor output, and then a USB hub on the front, and an AB switch on the top. So it basically lets you connect two computers up to one mouse and monitor and keyboard setup. Pretty straightforward. Usually um, there's larger versions of these that get used in uh, like data centers when they got a whole rack full of servers and they just want to share them with one monitor and keyboard. This one's a little bit smaller one. Um, this is one that I found in the box of IT junk in the corner at work that hasn't been used for a couple of years so I figured I could probably borrow it before somebody threw it out. Unfortunately, when you're hooking it up in the kid's room to his slowly growing um, computer lab that he's building in there, yeah, it's a teenager thing I guess. Yeah, I've got two computers within arm's reach of me so maybe it's just a living in the house thing. Anyway, so he had this thing hooked up and it seemed to be working. And then we plugged in the power supply that was with it when I got it. And the mouse that was plugged into this, specifically this fancy um, gaming mouse, immediately stopped working. It's got a little LED thing in there and that stopped working as well. So we quickly unplugged everything and stuck my nose up to this thing. And sure enough, she let the smoke out. Not pleased about that. So I'm guessing, well, so this, this power pack, it's rated for 12 volts, 500 milliamps. And it was in the, in the, uh, bag or in the box with this thing. When I pulled it out of the, uh, out of the IT closet, the bottom of this has no information at all. It doesn't say what its voltage is, anything else. No, not even a model number and searching around online. I can only find like a e an eBay listing for somebody selling one of these with no power supply. Um, Dynex's website seems to be an alias for Best Buy's website, so I'm guessing that's their host brand. But anyway, I guess the first thing to check is what is this power supply doing? So this power supply claims to be 12 volts. But in reality, with no load on it, it's like 17.9. That's a little carried away. Okay, you know, the 1K load on it. That's still almost 17 volts. So that's probably... Ow, that resistor's warm, so it was drawing a fair, a fair bit of power. So that's probably a pretty good clue as to why this thing let the smoke out. So I got the cover off it. And I'm just looking inside here. Um, looks like there's some power steering diodes so that this thing doesn't back feed down uh, from the power connector to the output. So first thing, I'm guessing this thing is probably only expecting 5 volts off the wall wart. Maybe 6 minus a diode drop, right? That's a little disturbing. So the let me just go to... Sniff test, and it sound, smells like it's coming from down this end, and that's sort of what I expect, experience too. It kind of smelled like it was coming from that connector. Let's see if we can see any skid marks or anything. Oh. That chip over there. Looks like it's not super happy. Or is that just a bit of flux? No, I can feel that's that little shiny spot there is actually three-dimensional. So I think that guy probably was on was heating up. So the 74HC244 is a an octal buffer line driver tri-state. So its its uh, outputs can either be go high, low, or be at a floating don't care kind of a level. Um, so eight lines 
and there's two of them in there, so we basically controlling 16 lines. So I'm guessing that those are probably uh, switching the video, uh, the VGA ports. So there's what it is inside, and there's two control lines to uh, switch them or to switch the outputs uh, from their don't care to their pass through kind of mode. Aha! Here we go. Supply voltage max plus seven volts. That would explain what happened when you put 17 volts on it. I guess I could have figured this out from looking at the uh, board too, but it confirms what my guess was. Um, these two eight uh, port line drivers do have a bunch of traces that are going to the VGA connections, so that's not really a surprise. The USB magic is happening under la blob. Um, that is a sill resistor, so pulling up, probably. Um, I'm, I'm guessing... Oh, no, that's the ground point. So it's the sill resistor is pulling uh, pulling the uh, USB lines down. Okay. And where is... There's our output. Where's that little six pin there? Oh, that's the switch. What? Is the USB just being mechanically switched? Because this is the this is the two USB outputs to the two different computers, and there's two data lines there, and there's two data lines there. Yeah, they're just coming over to this freaking switch. Oh, and then they're going through this, which is a USB hub, probably, and then out to these four guys. Okay, so that's that's pretty low rent. Let's just try a little experiment here, shall we? My suspicion is that this barrel jack is connected to the 5 volts going out these guys, and the 5 volts going everywhere. Um, so let's try that. I've got 5 volts set on my little power supply here, and just running into a little barrel jack. I've got it current limited at an amp, which is probably still too much, but whatever. And confirm that there is 5 volts coming from there. 4.98. Close enough. So here is the USB ports going out. Essentially the hub to USB ports, right? Let's go across ground and 5 volts. That's 4.77 volts. So that's a quarter of a volt drop to get there. Let's turn, I'm going to turn the power supply now up to 6 volts. I can't break this thing any worse than it already is, right? Okay, so there's 6 volts even. So if my theory is right, this should be about 5 and 3 quarters or thereabouts. Yup. So this barrel jack is just coming in through one diode, probably a shot key diode if it's a quarter of a volt. And then onto the bus. So when we put 17 and a half volts on there, we're throwing 16 volts onto these USB ports and onto the chips. No wonder she smoked. So now that we know what happened, let's see if we can uh, find out what's blown in this uh, mouse. It'd be really nice if there was a, a low... Uh, value resistor acting as a sacrificial fuse or something. My searching online tells me that there are some screws underneath this little adhesive plate here and maybe underneath there. So get in with less spudger. Now, normally I wouldn't bother to try and fix a mouse, but this one's very pr well, I mean. As gaming mice go, it's on the it's on the bargain end, but it was like 75 bucks or something, I think. So always gotta try, right? There we go. Hopefully I can get this thing back together again. Oh, there's a lot going on in here. Okay, so that LED window comes up through a little light pipe from that little LED down there. So that'll be a triple color LED. 
got a little daughter board on the side here with I think some more LEDs on it and then the three little switches um, that is probably going out to the USB I'm guessing the mouse wheel and a little oh that's interesting so this little button on top can either make that into a cookie mouse wheel or just a free rolling one interesting and there's another switch back here somewhere that does something okay and then switches there 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 oh omron branded presumably legitimate omron as opposed to what i pull out of my mailbag cheap chinese crud that's interesting but oh, another switch back there wow so that's one of the things that makes this a gaming mouse other than the the rgb goofiness um, is that it's got a whole bunch of extra buttons and little tunable things like that what is this hmm. that's a magnet there's a little pocket down here that's magnetic all right this thing came with some extra weights so you could actually put weight in it to do things. So what's going on? So this goes down, this little ribbon cable goes down to the sensor on the bottom. That goes out there, that goes in there. Okay. And then this guy here is the brains. And if it got way too much voltage, it's going to be smacked. And it's no doubt a purpose-built chip. I don't know, do you think that paper label actually means anything? RCGCBD R1G6B2. Hmm. To Google. No, I didn't really expect that to come up with anything. So we'll have to look at what's actually on the chip itself. Ah, STM32. Oh, wow. It's a microcontroller. STM32... L one zero zero. Right then, the STM thirty two L one hundred R eight microcontroller, a thirty two bit MCU ARM Cortex. Yeah, there's a lot of brains going on inside this mouse, um, and it's not just to blink the lights either. Uh, you can actually record macros and store them on the mouse itself and program them onto one of those extra buttons, which is why these things are popular with gamers, I guess. However, there we go, up to 3.6 volt power supply. So unless there is some kind of a, well, no, there's got to be some kind of a regulator or some kind of a power supply on this mouse. Because there's five volts supposed to be coming in from the uh, from the USB, right? Hmm. We may still be able to salvage this thing. Well, depending on how that power supply, well, if we found the power supply first of all, and depending on how it died and what it is, this is actually a fairly well-made little mouse. There's a lot going on in there. I wasn't expecting that ST microcontroller. I guess some of that explains why they're getting 75 bucks for these things at retail. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now then, is that everything holding the board in? Yes, it is. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That doesn't look like a happy little uh, device. I'm going to guess that that's a voltage regulator. MBLHZ. Find a data sheet for that. So I did some searching for that little uh, five pin jobby and I could not find a data sheet or even a reference to that part number. However, it's failure mode. Basically has all pins shorted together. Here's the input five volts. And all five pins are shorted to that, which means when it died, Rather than acting like a fuse, 
it jammed that full 17 volts into everything else, including the microcontroller, which means there's no going back with this thing. I, mean, I suppose if I could find what the hell this thing is, and I'm assuming it's a 3 volt regulator, but it is a 5 pin jobby and who knows exactly what it is. I'm guessing a low volt, low dropout of uh, 3.3 volt regulator. Regardless, it smacked this chip, then we could get that STM chip or that ST microcontroller's chip, but we can't get the programming. So we're toast. It's just a waste of effort to go any deeper into this thing. But I guess that was an interesting exploration. Now then, I suppose since I am the one who brought this thing, or more importantly, this thing into the house and gave it to my kid, I guess I do owe him a new mouse. Oh well, live and learn. Thanks for watching everybody. I will talk to you later. Hopefully with something a little bit more, uh, more happy than all this dead electronics that I can't fix.